Welcome back to Beaver Science for the second sequence of video reviews over cell division. In the previous video, we covered the cell cycle, and uh, so you might want to go back and kind of review that. Essentially, the cell cycle just outlines this regular sequence of events that a cell goes through as it goes through this process of cell division. And there's two different types of cell division. There's mitosis and meiosis. Uh, so here's the hand-drawn version of that diagram. And then from the diagrams that are available to you in Canvas, here is a computer-generated graphic that uh, essentially mimics that hand-drawn diagram. Maybe you can see uh, and read the details a little bit better from that graphic. And on the back side of that, in the previous video, we did an overview of mitosis. And remember that what we're talking about is cell division. So we're just taking one cell and we're gonna make more. If we're talking about mitosis, we say the chromosome count is preserved. We go from a diploid chromosome count to diploid. And so it's 2N to 2N or diploid to diploid. So if you take a look at the parent cell, remember this is happening in your normal body cells, your somatic cells. Uh, we start out with a diploid chromosome count in this example of uh, 2N equaling 4. In your normal body cells, that 2N or diploid chromosome count would be 46. But in mitosis, we replicate the DNA, and then we go through each of the phases of uh, mitosis, and we end up with two duplicate daughter cells, basically, that are both diploid uh, at the end of telophase. So we're going to contrast that a little bit with what's going on with meiosis. And so if you'll... Uh, Follow me to this next diagram, and again, this should be available to you, or um, if you don't have a printer and you can't print this out, um, you could simply draw in these, uh, these figures and these, uh, uh, essentially the, the plasma membrane and the, the circles that represent the plasma membrane and the one that represents the nucleus. Okay, so we're talking about spermatogenesis. Spermatogenesis is basically meiosis in the male. And in uh, meiosis, we're going from a diploid chromosome count to a haploid chromosome count. So we're gonna reduce the chromosome count by one half. Okay, so we're going from diploid to haploid uh, in this scenario. In your cells, we would be going from 46 chromosomes down to 23 in the gametes, in the sperm and the egg. Now in the male, uh, one of the things to remember both in the male and the female in terms of meiosis is like when is this happening and what's the uh, what are the resulting cells, what do they look like? In the male, this starts in puberty and it's actually occurring in the male reproductive structures, re reproductive structures which are the testes. Remember the sperm is made in the testis and then stored in the epididymis. So let's begin uh, with the parent cell which is called the spermatogonium. And the spermatogonium is diploid. So it looks a whole lot like mitosis when we start out. So this is gonna be a diploid cell. And we're only gonna use a total of two pairs or four total chromosomes to kind of follow this through the process. And so here's one of the pairs of chromosomes. There's the other. They're, these are called homologous pairs. Okay, and remember that during interphase, specifically during the uh, S stage of the cell cycle in interphase, DNA is going to replicate. So DNA replicates. just like it did in uh, mitosis. And this happens during interphase, but specifically during the S stage. So this chromosome will replicate, comes down here, held together by that little constricted region called a centromere. This chromosome replicates, this one, and this one. Okay, the resulting cell after DNA replicates is called the primary spermatocyte. Okay, 
Now, if you take a look at this, you don't really need to know this term, but here you actually have four copies of the same type of chromosome. And we've called these duplicate chromosomes several different terms. They could be duplicate chromosomes, they could be sister chromatid, and just to keep things interesting, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give these sister chromatid another name, and we're gonna call them a dyad. Di means two, so that means this right here, these two copies of these chromosomes is called a dyad. It's essentially the same thing as the sister chromatid. Now, um, two dyads together, so if those two dyads together would be a tetrad. These two dyads together would also be a tetrad. Tetra means four. So you have one, two, three, four copies of the same kind of chromosome. So this is a tetrad. I think these terms will help you to kind of understand what's happening as we uh, go through the, the process of meiosis. And remember that meiosis is uh, also different from mitosis in that there are two divisions of the genetic material. And so that's what's, what uh, gets us down to the haploid chromosome count, is that second division of the genetic material. So the tetrad basically um, consists of two pairs of sister chromatid. And there's two divisions of the genetic material in uh, meiosis. There's meiosis one, and meiosis one is a division of the tetrads. So essentially, one dyad from each tetrad is gonna go to the two resulting cells. And so this dyad will come over here, and this dyad from this tetrad will come to this cell. Same way for this tetrad. It will split during meiosis one. The resulting daughter cells are called secondary spermatocytes. Site means cell, okay, and so there's two of them. Now, this is where things start to get a little bit different in terms of the second division of the genetic material. So we had meiosis one, so that means there must be a meiosis two. And meiosis two is a division of the dyad. or sister chromatid. So for example, this dyad is going to divide um, between these two cells. So one of the chromosomes from the dyad will come to this cell. A little bit of that uh, centrosome stays associated with it. And the other chromosome from that dyad will come to this cell. The same thing for this dyad. While that's going on over here, don't forget about this one. Okay, and so this dyad is going to divide as well. Okay, so that chromosome's coming from here to here. This chromosome's coming from here to here. This dyad will divide. And what are now individual chromosomes are uh, moving to these resulting cells. These are really the immature sperm cells. And these are called spermatid. And this is the first time that you can notice that basically we've reduced the chromosome count now. And so there used to be a pair of these that was replicated, and now we've divided it twice. And so the spermatid or immature sperm cells 
are what we would consider to be haploid. That means they only have one copy of each type of chromosome. So these spermatid are haploid. And we can abbreviate haploid with the letter N, and the total chromosome count in each one of these spermatid um, is two. So the only thing left in terms of uh, forming mature sperm cells is these things have to get around, and so we need an organelle to go from A to B. Uh, and so the, mature, the sperm cells have to mature, and during that process, they're going to add a flagella. And it takes, uh, from start to end, the whole process is probably about a, a week for uh, the maturation of, of these sperm cells. The chromosome count doesn't change in the mature sperm cells. You still have only one copy of each type of chromosome. Okay? And so these mature sperm cells are still haploid, but now they've got a way to go from A to B with the addition of the flagella. And so these are the sperm cells they're haploid, and we could show the chromosome count as n equaling 2. Uh, the sperm cells also will have a, a lot of mitochondria, um, high energy demands, and so if you look at this in general and kind of think about the overall process, um, this is happening in the male. This is meiosis in the male. It's called spermatogenesis. Uh, we're reducing the chromosome count by one half. We're going from 2N to N, or diploid to haploid. The beginning cell is a spermatogonium. This would be found in the testis of the male, and this process starts at puberty, and essentially it continues throughout the course of the male's lifetime until death. Um, and from this one sperm cell, Basically, it's going to go through this process of two uh, divisions of the genetic material, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2, after the DNA replicates, and that's going to get you down to the haploid uh, chromosome count and the resulting what we would call gametes, and the gametes in the male are the sperm cells. The male literally produces hundreds of millions of sperm over a course of, you know, a 24-hour period. Um, if the sperm aren't released, basically they just break down or are reabsorbed by the body. So that's spermatogenesis. That's meiosis in the male. The female, especially the human female, it's a little bit different. And so let's take a look at that. So on the back side of this, we have uh, what's called oogenesis. Oo is egg. Uh, genesis means the beginning of. And so oogenesis is meiosis in the female. Okay, and in this scenario, we're also going to go from 2N to N, or diploid to haploid. And okay, this look, looks a little bit different. I mean, it's just, as you look at the diagram, you know, spermatogenesis kind of makes sense. You start with one cell, you end up with four uh, gametes. Oogenesis in the female, the timing of it is a little bit more complicated in, the, in humans anyway and the resulting number of cells is, is different. And part of that is due to the evolutionary pathway that we've taken. The human female, really the, the body, uh, is only designed to carry one offspring at a time. And so the female doesn't want to release four mature gametes uh, per, uh, per cycle. Uh, the female wants to get down to just one haploid uh, gamete, which is the egg, um, per cycle, which is about a 28-day cycle. And the timing of this is a little bit different as well. I'm going to go ahead and start to draw some things in and, and talk about that timing as we go, but in the human female, oogenesis, meiosis in the female, uh, begins in the embryo, and it begins in the reproductive organs, which are the ovaries. It will continue to a certain point, and then it essentially stops at birth, and then picks up again at puberty. But the female doesn't continue to release gametes throughout the course of their life cycle. Um, they reach a point a little bit later in life 
uh, where the, the gametes don't go away, they're just not being released. And so there's a change in hormonal um, production and um, just like there is during puberty. Uh, but the female will actually stop releasing uh, the gametes or the eggs uh, during a period called menopause. As, um, as the female gets a little bit older, um, it's very physically taxing to carry the offspring and, and so it uh, becomes a little bit more difficult as you get older in age and so it's kind of like a defense or a protective mechanism for both the offspring and uh, the mother. So this beginning cell, this will be occurring in the, um, in the embryonic ovary, is called the oogonium. Oo means egg. And the oogonium is diploid, and so that means 2N, and we're just going to again show uh, two pairs of homologous chromosomes for a total of four chromosomes. Very similar in that DNA is going to replicate, and DNA replicates, you guessed it, during the S stage of interphase in the cell cycle. Okay, and this resulting cell is called the primary oocyte. And so this chromosome will replicate, held together by a little centromere. This one replicates. This one replicates. And this one replicates. And this is all happening in the embryo, um, embryonic ovary. Okay. The cell that results is called the primary oocyte. So everything that's happening up here basically is occurring in the embryo, in the ovary. And at this point, uh, basically at birth, oogenesis is kind of arrested or stops. And it doesn't kick up again until puberty with the onset of uh, hormonal changes. So everything below this dotted line really starts back up again at puberty. Uh, with this, you know, fairly regular cycle on an average of about 28 days. Okay, so this division um, is called meiosis one. And you might notice that there's a di difference in the size of the, the resulting cells. And really this isn't um, a viable cell. Uh, this is what's called a polar body. And because the female is only going to release one mature ovum or egg based on their ability to carry the offspring, they need to get rid of half of the genetic material but still only end up releasing uh, one mature ovum or egg approximately every 28 days. Okay, and so meiosis one is a division of the tetrads similar to what we saw in meiosis in the male. And so remember, this is a dyad, this is a dyad, this is a dyad, this is a dyad. Together, those two dyads are a tetrad. So one of the dyads will come to this structure. This dyad will come to this structure. And then this tetrad will also separate. Now this um, is called unequal cytokinesis. And so this structure that results is not really a viable cell. It's actually called a polar body. And there'll be two of these polar bodies uh, generated. So this is the first polar body. A, and it doesn't get very much cytoplasm. It's not really viable. And so what happens is it it just breaks down and it's reabsorbed by the, by the female. Okay, this uh, uneven distribution of the cytoplasm is called unequal 
cytokinesis. And there's some terms that you should be getting out of your notes and uh, from the lecture material, this first polar body just breaks down. Uh, but remember, there's two major processes in, involved in cell division. There's a division of the nucleus, which is karyokinesis, and then the division of the cytoplasm, which is cytokinesis. Both mitosis and meiosis in the male, um, you have an equal distribution of the cytoplasm to the daughter cells. But because we're only generating one mature ovum or egg in this scenario, uh, we're saving the, the majority of the cytoplasm and the nutrients for that cell that's going to become the mature gamete. And this cell is called the secondary oocyte. Okay, so if that's meiosis one, this is meiosis two. And remember that meiosis two is a division of the dyads. Okay, and so here's our dyad. Okay, one chromosome is gonna come to the, what's gonna become the second polar body from that dyad or sister chromatid. One chromosome is going to come to this cell, which will go ahead and mature to the mature ovum or egg. Okay, this dyad separates, keeps a little piece of that centromere associated with it. Okay, this is the second polar body. Again, not viable, breaks down, reabsorbed by the female. This resulting cell is the immature egg or ootid. Okay, and if you take a look at this, the ootid has only one copy of each type of chromosome. So now we've re reduced the chromosome count to haploid in the ootid. And we can write haploid shorthand as N, and in this case, N is going to equal 2. Now, um, basically, this ootid uh, will mature and eventually become the mature ovum or egg. If the egg is not fertilized, the egg basically moves down through the, the reproductive tract and it's sloughed off during the, the normal uh, menstrual cycle in the female. If, however, this guy shows up and um, decides that he wants to join this ootid or egg, then this is our gamete from the male. This is the sperm cell. And the sperm cell is also haploid. So n equals 2. Once the sperm enters the egg and you get a fusion basically of the nuclei from the sperm and from the egg, that is essentially fertilization. And so if fertilization takes place, you're combining the genetic information from both of the gametes, from the sperm and the egg. Okay, and so the sperm cells bringing one copy of this chromosome, the egg has a copy of that chromosome, one copy of this one, the egg has a copy. And so the resulting cell after fertilization will look something like this. where you have two copies of the same type of chromosome. That first cell is called the zygote. And the zygote is diploid, one, two, one, two copies of the same kind of chromosome. And we can write diploid as 2n equals 4. Now this cell, basically just goes back to interface. 
and it goes back to, you know, the old cell cycle. And so this cell would go back to G1, S, G2, all of that stuff, and go through multiple mitotic divisions, and over a period of time, that one cell becomes two cells, those two become four, four become eight, and eventually, this all leads to an organism that has trillions of specialized cells, much like yourself. And so that uh, basically is a summary of uh, meiosis, and specifically meiosis in the male, spermatogenesis, and meiosis in the female, oogenesis. It corresponds to the figures in your textbook in chapter 36 and so if you want to take a closer look at those that is uh, 36.9 spermatogenesis and oogenesis thank you very much good luck